How do you find the money maker? And a warm welcome to one and all. If this is your first time here, I'm the big fella, that is the scruffy trader. What I'm trying to do is kind of put trading in the real world. Maybe show you a trick or two along the way. So if that sounds good and you want to see further updates, drop in the description. You'll find all my social media feeds and smash that little subscribe button. It genuinely helps and motivates me to do more of this. So what is this we doing? Well, funny enough, we're chatting about trading. It's kind of all we do on this channel. I do take the mickey quite a bit. So if you like a laugh as well as finding out some knowledge, it's definitely worth hitting that subscribe button, as I've just said. So what are we banging on about? Money makers. Surely that's what all the markets are. Are they? Hmm. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. It's an interesting question. Because as new traders, you naturally get attracted to trading because you think it's easy. And I know you see the glossy videos with the flash cards and everything. You ding dong! Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. But is that really trading or are you just looking for a lifestyle, you know? It's a little bit like watching the Kardashians on Instagram. Personally, I haven't got a clue who they are. I don't particularly care either. But the younger generation, they, they, they sort of follow it and they hunt for it all the time and, they, and they're in awe of all these pictures. But ultimately, that's all they are. They're just pictures. And most of them are set up in a way that is unattainable. And I think sometimes that's how trading is kind of marketed. It is just pictures of an unattainable dream. Are you serious? Now, when you do come to trading, there is simplistic ways you can make money. But it takes money to make money. Because you're not going to flick 200 quid into a million, as some sort of try and say. It takes time. And within that time, you've got to build up your education. You are not going to do it in 10 minutes. So when I'm asked the question, what is the money maker? It's kind of difficult to answer. But what I can do is show you something on a chart or I'll jump on the whiteboard and I'll show you something to think about. That can create a money maker. Because a money maker is just your own interpretation of it, you know. £10 could be rich to somebody and minuscule to somebody else. And the same as £10,000 could be rich to somebody and minuscule to somebody else. It's perception. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something around perception. Because that's actually how you make money in the markets. You have a perceived idea of what you believe is going on. And it looks like I've got a perceived idea of somebody in the background. What are you doing? Bringing the coffee. You bring the cup. You've got no clothes on. Doesn't do. It's un... She's got no clothes on, boys and girls. That's disgraceful. This video is going to end very soon. <laughs> and I'll come back a bit. What are you doing? Tying me belts. Bloody hell, I thought you were taking them off. You dirty old man. <laughs> 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 All, all, all I can see with you like doing this in the whoa. I know we have a good night on a Saturday night, but bloody hell, Sunday as well. <laughs> Christ, I'll have a heart attack. That'll keep up. I have you worried if I get a heart attack, but what a way to go. What do you mean, bank holiday? Does that mean three times? I'll never make it. We've had bank holiday weekend, haven't we? Know, it's, been, it's been good, hasn't it? We, we've had a jolly old time this Jubilee weekend. We genuinely have. Say, so, who'd be stupid enough to do that? Justify, stupid. Right, I'll just clarify for those who've never been here before. Nothing in these videos is scripted. Not a bean, right? I'll get an email or a message 
or a few good guys and I'll just switch the camera on and away we go. So when you see what goes on around this house, it's kind of our life, it's, it's real life. And when you see me trading, I am trading in the moment, real time, never roll back charts. So, right, well, what was on about? Sit, oh, I've lost all my train of thought now. Oh, dear me, it was almost, you got me all excited there. You have caused confusion and delay and terrible trouble to my trousers. This is, this is not normal, as our kids keep telling us. <laughs> Apparently, when you're our age and we've been together so long, we have to sit in the chair and just be a little bit too boring. But apparently, we are like the original embarrassing parents and, and they don't like going out with us. Although, we, we do have a jolly time from time to time. We've got a great night last night. Uh, had a kind of little bit of a family get together. So, where are we, where are we going with this? Deception. Right. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> What, what happens with perception and money makers is when you come into the charts, you have a perceived idea. And your perceived idea is either long, short, range bound, whatever. And then you make a judgment call from that. Now, is there something in the charts that can help you? Well, there is. And there are certain candles that can be money makers. Let me go on the whiteboard and I'll put it into a strange way of looking at it, but it may make sense to you. So come with me. Well, we're waiting. Okay, guys, got my copy, because we all know Scruffy likes a copy. And let's see if we can put this into some form of perspective, looking at a basic chart. So the question was, how do you tell the money maker? It's quite a broad thing to say, but there are certain characteristics of the chart that are money makers. Now, the first one obviously is your levels, but there are kind of three candles that I look for when it comes to said level. And let's just move storm you over here. Get on your nerves. Look at the camera boy. Make yourself a film scan. Right, we have this candle, a doji, all right, easily recognized. We have this candle, now it can be upside down or whatever, just make that a bit longer. Hammer, starburst, whatever you want to call it, but basically small body to the top of the bottom with a long tail. But the one I pay very close attention to at the level is the one that looks like this. Something that is two to three times bigger than the norm. Massive candle. And why do I look more importantly at that than I do the other two? Well, if you look at through the chart, these are indecision. There's a battle going on. And you're not rightly sure which side is going to win until you see the formation. They're just a clue to what might happen. Now, if you see this, um, you see a bunch of candles moving up the chart for whatever reason. Three. And then you get your doji, like so. You're kind of asking yourself a question, you know, is it going to reverse? Is it going to continue? You don't know. But in this situation, if you've seen three candles moving up, and I often work to the power of three, you'll find the doji is just a rest. It's just where the market's kind of taking a breather because the markets do breathe. They'll breathe in and they will breathe out. I have my hand gesture the wrong way, but you get the picture. So on its own, it doesn't really tell you anything. Likewise, if you see this. Now, if it's at a level, it adds a bit of weight to maybe there's a reversal. 
because you've seen a bit of a flush the sellers have come in at that point and pushed it down and you can have an idea that this is going to continue to move to the downside and there's a change but what it could also be is just simply profit taking and again it's the market breathing out and breathing in so again on its own even with a level it's not as strong as you think but if you start seeing clusters of them sort of a doji comes in and then that's the next candle well it adds a bit of weight so where does this little bad boy come into well let me see if i can kind of explain it a little because that is the one that I watch because it gives me quite a bit of information and a lot more information than the, the other two so oh, okay. oh, that great so we've got all levels on there one here one here right. key levels so what's this got to do with the price of bread well, let's just imagine that we are watching the market come down. Okay, so it's come off this level. We've got our nice little sort of formation coming in. You know, it had a little bit of profit taking. Gave us our little doji here. And then it sort of slammed in. Like so with a bit of a bit of a hammer and you think oh, maybe then the market thinks about it and then just continues on its little journey down just like so and it comes down to roughly where the level is and you're thinking to yourself hmm is this going to continue to the downside but I've seen a doji and I've seen a push think it could be it could well be pushing to the downside and you might be right but then suddenly you see this boom all right now that candle can throw the dynamic off altogether because what you may be thinking at this point is the level is holding it is going to zoom back up to the other side and it's a fair assumption to make but what you also got to assume is who can make that can who has the power to push it that far that quick now if this is on a one minute chart or a five minute chart it doesn't really hold a great deal of weight you know, but if you're on a 15 minute and above and you see something that's two to three times bigger than the norm, somebody somewhere has a lot of money plowed into that. Now, there are two versions of money. You have big money and you have little money. Now, big money is the bank and little money is us the retail trade so what am i driving at here well earlier on i said i get a lot of information from this more so than the other well the first bit of information is it's defining a range that i can work in straight away there's a range i can work in and I can look for either a midpoint because you'll have a midpoint in it and then you can have the open and the close now if this is on a daily these are what are referred to as daddy levels the levels that return to constantly now if I'm at the bottom or at the top rather something that moves that quick has a reprieve so i can have a quick scalp down into that center ground using this section here as an entry so very quick boom, get in get out 
And why do I say get in, get out? Because if the banks are at play here, it can be dangerous. Okay? And they can move the market very quickly thereafter as well. Why? Because there's a lot of volume involved at this point. So I don't want to outstay my welcome. I don't want to punch above my weight, shall we say. So I just want to get in and get out. So that's a quick scalp. What it can also do is start telling me to stay out of the market. And I know you're going to step back and go, wow, 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 wow. That's not how you make money. Actually, it is. Knowing when to stay out of the market is probably more important than getting into the market. Because if I see that, it could also be a trap. It's a trap! And who wants to spring it? I certainly don't. I'd rather let some other person spring the trap and then I'll carry on. So what's the trap? Well, if it's profit taking, it's excessive profit taking. Right? Is it enough to turn the market? Who knows at this point? The next few candles is going to tell you. Now we know the markets range probably 70% of the time. Okay. So my scalping brain would come into play here and I'd be looking to work between the ranges into the middle ground constantly. Bo -bo 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 -bo. But then I have a mantra. No way. And my mantra is Scott. Score. Stop. And what's that? That's going to break. And it's either going to break to the upside or the downside. And I don't know which way it's going just yet. So I'm not going to outstay my welcome. I'll go in, get some money. I'll go in again, get some money. That's it. And that way I'm safe. I'm staying out the market. All right. Move that out to one side for just a second. However, if it does break, it's going to break for a good reason. Okay? If it is a continuation down, what that is, is the big money taking out the little money. All right? In other words, the little money is seeing that the market may well be moving down. And you're probably right because it is in a downward move and a strong downward move at this point. The level is holding for a degree, but it's also an area of activity. And what are you taught? Well, you're taught to place your stops above the last candle. And if you are sort of a little bit aggressive, you might put it against the last second candle, the last two, okay? So if the big money is going to chase out the little money, they have to pull that up a considerable way in order to catch people out. And that's why it pulls up roughly halfway into between two levels. Boom, 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 boom. Soak up all that liquidity, soak up all those stops, and then just carry on in its journey down. And that's kind of what happens here because it's just playing with us. And then the next one breaks, just like so. And the cycle carries on again. All right. So really what I'm looking for is the trap. And the trap can actually be the money maker. Why? Because, it's, well, just to give it an easy way of looking at things, you may have heard of the London breakout. The London breakout is based on a singular candle, which is the hours range from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. London time, and you're looking for a break either side of it, and it's to see where the continuation is. Is it a good strategy? Mm, it was all right in its day, but not so much anymore. But you can use the principles here. Now, all you're doing at this point is you're reading the market coming down 
do do it across multiple time frames so that'd be clue that has triggered a trap and then this one here is showing you it's going to continue down and then there's the continuation following through and if you go through the charts quite regular you'll start seeing that more often than not because the retail market they always want to jump on the bandwagon but you're jumping on the bandwagon at the end of its journey and the banks are going to use that against you um, so that is a form of money maker if it is what you're looking for now another way of trading this sort of situation right? get that out of the way is you've got your big candle here I'm just kind of showing you sort of the daddy levels if you like run, running across just like so okay and then the one in the middle what if you use it as a breakout candle and that can help you as well but the trick with the breakout candle in a situation like this when you're day trading again i'll go back to score score stop in time is don't outstay your welcome okay what you can do is you can look for a singular candle to break and then place your order above that candle or if it breaks the other way obviously the same you have a stop point which is here and here so if you work into two and then you just look for the continuation down into the next level where the whole cycle will start again very very simple way of looking at the charts and that is basic chart reading you know obviously you've got to delve into it and understand it but if you start seeing this part of the puzzle that part of the puzzle and you start putting the jigsaw pieces together eventually you start seeing the big picture of what the market is trying to achieve and what i'll say is when you see these sort of things on a high time frame whatever the next move is it's going to be pretty substantial why well because a lot of money involved and that substantial move would be enough for you to get in and get out relatively quickly on say an hourly chart or a 15 minute chart and just hold your trade for the next 15 minutes and then when the time sort of buzzer stops you just get out you know so i'm saying that you enter on that candle say it's say this is a 15 minute chart so it breaks the candle holds for 15 minutes get out that's it it's your job done you know and that's intraday trading you know one of the worst things you can do is try and preempt what that is and hold on try to think what the big boys are playing at you don't know what they're playing at because you don't know whether the profit taken for a market to turn around and move up to the other side whether it is a trap and if it's a trap let the first one spring and then play with the second one and if it's continuation further to the downside you ride it out day trading is quite difficult guys but only if you zoned in on a very micro time frame but if you look at a big time frame i'm talking your hourly your four hour and your day and you start seeing these things working a 15 and a five minute chart becomes a whole lot easier so hope that gives you something to think about I genuinely do and as always keep dropping your questions into me you will find all my contact details in the description and I answer every single one of them and pop your comments in and the other guys can see it and they can interact with you as well we'll build some form of community so as always guys keep well keep your risk managed above all do what you love and the money will follow see you all in the next one Thank you.